Now that we have a better appreciation for the organic chemistry seen within biological molecules, we can now finally start talking about the actual molecules. And before we begin, we want to understand something about biological molecules in terms of how they work, how they're built, what they look like. And a term that we want to start off with, and this flowchart will be entitled, is macromolecules. This is what biological molecules are all about. Macro is a term that's the opposite of micro, and it means big or large. And molecules we know are defined as things that have, remember the definition, two or more, so two plus atoms. And if we have two plus atoms, and remember they have to be in a fixed ratio, a macromolecule fits this definition because a macromolecule is often going to be thousands of atoms. Not just two plus, but of course, even more, thousands of atoms. This is where the macro part of this word comes from. It's so thousands of atoms. In addition to that, there are going to be four classes that we discuss. And these four classes are as follows. There are four types of macromolecules. You've probably heard of most of them. The first type are, are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. These are this one word. just want to put it here. Uh, carbohydrates. And these over here are going to be otherwise just known as carbs. We've heard of carbs before. And the next type uh, are lipids. common way of referring to lipids are fats. Uh, the next type are proteins. And the last one that we'll talk about um, in this series is nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are a fancy way of saying, uh, let's say, DNA or RNA, genetic material. So we have carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Each of those we'll cover in the subsequent videos. But one thing we want to talk about in terms of macromolecules that we have to, have to, have to understand is this idea of building, and specifically the idea of a polymer. What is a polymer? Poly is a term that simply means many. Many what? Well, many things, let's say. Many connections. A polymer is specifically defined as something, and we have to remember this definition, defined as something in which many identical, or let's say similar slash similar, monomers, are linked together. So, let's break down this definition a little bit. We obviously know that poly means many. Just establish that. So there it is. Many identical or similar. And then what is this word? Monomers. If you don't know, the term mono means one. Singular. It's just one. So many one pieces, many, many pieces of just one thing are linked together, all combined together via, and if I told you they're linked together via very strong bonds, what type of bonds would they be? Of course, covalent bonds. And we'll get into the specificity of these bonds later on in videos. Each of these carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids have very specific types of covalent bonds that we'll talk about once we get to those specific videos. So. Another thing we want to talk about when we look at polymers is this idea of formation and deformation. How do we make a polymer and how do we break down a polymer? So formation slash deformation. So the formation of polymers is done through a simple reaction which is known as, and you have to know this term, be very familiar with it, a dehydration reaction. De hydration, and a reaction can be abbreviated as RxN. Another way to say this, another synonymous term to this that you'll see is a condensation reaction. Be familiar with both, be able to use both simultaneously and interchangeably. Condensation reaction, dehydration reaction literally mean the same thing. So what does this mean? How do we work a dehydration reaction? What is the inner workings of this? So we can say that a dehydration reaction occurs when two monomers, remember what monomers are, the single units, single units are linked together, of course, because this is the formation 
we're trying to form what? A polymer. And a polymer is a type of macromolecule because it's big, it has many atoms. It has many, thousands of atoms. So, this dehydration reaction involves two monomers linked together. And the two things that happen, you have to remember in this dehydration reaction, is think of this word, dehydration. D means like without, or stopping, or going against. So, what's going to happen is, you're going to dehydrate in this reaction. What do you think you're going to do then? If you're dehydrated, what happens to your, to your body? You need water, right? You're very thirsty. So this is going to be dehydration reaction. So it's going to be a loss of what? Of H2O, of course. We lose water in this situation. And at the loss of water, we gain something incredibly important. We gain this linkage. What is the linkage that we gain? A covalent bond. We create a covalent bond. So a covalent bond formed. Lose water, create covalent bond. Simple. And as far as deformation is concerned, it's simply the exact opposite. It's just the exact opposite. That's all you have to know about this. It's the exact opposite. And the process itself is known as, and we can write this down as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a word that we can break down. Hydro obviously is referring to what? Water. And lysis, if you don't know, lysis means to split apart, to break. And look what we're doing in this situation. We're deforming. We're deforming. We're breaking down a polymer using what? Using water. Because what did we do to build the polymer? We lost water. Now we're going to use water to break down the polymer. So a good way to remember this I think is to draw it out, draw it actually happening. So what is a dehydration reaction? Two monomers linked together. Let me draw two monomers. Mono, that's a monomer, and I'm going to link it together with another mono. Right? Monomer, monomer. One single unit is going to be linked together, and I'm going to do this through a process. So this process is going to be what? What is the process called? A dehydration reaction, of course. So we're going to undergo dehydration. Let's write that down on top of the arrow. And remember, the top of the arrow denotes a process. What's happening? Dehydration is happening. And because dehydration is happening, what do we expect? A loss of H2O. So let's make sure that we draw a little small arrow saying that H2O gets lost. It gets sort of thrown out. And we end up with this structure, a mono, but no longer are they separated by this plus sign. They're literally connected to each other via what? What is this right here? This is our CB. This is our covalent bond that we just gained. And what else did we lose in this situation? We lost water. So we're just going to write plus H2O on the side. So the H2O came, the H2O was a part of these two molecules, let's say. Both of these had H2O within them. And when they were formed, they both gave off this singular H2O molecule. This is now going to go off into the environment. It's going to go away. That's the loss of H2O. It goes away. It's no longer part of their structure. Because now we have a mono and a monomer combined together, this is now known as a dimer. What does di mean? Di simply means two. So now we have two things linked together, two units. We do this over and over and over again. We are obviously going to finally form a polymer. That's what happens. That's how you make a polymer. So how do you break down a polymer? Well, let's go right over here. If we have a monomer linked to another monomer. This is a very strong linkage. We have to use something to break it down. This breaking down process is known as hydrolysis, right? So we're going to go through hydrolysis. Hydrolysis involves the splitting of a dimer, let's say in this situation, via water. So we're going to input water now. So we're going to put it into the equation. So H2O comes in over here, H2O was leaving. Now H2O comes in to help break this down. What does it break down into? Our same thing that we started with, mono plus mono, two individual subunits. And lastly, what we want to cover in terms of polymer is what is a polymer? Only three out of four of these are polymers, and we're going to write them down. Carbs, proteins, and nucleic acids are polymers. What is not a polymer? Let's write this down. Not 
lipids. And we'll see why once we talk about lipids. So overall macromolecules, this is the basis of biological molecules. This is how we're going to understand. We're going to have thousands of atoms connected together. These thousands of atoms are connected together can result in carbs, lipids, proteins, or nucleic acids. When we have thousands and thousands of atoms linked together, we have a polymer, many units. And these many units are linked together via strong covalent bonds. It makes sense that if you want to build something, you want to build it strong. So you use covalent bonds. How are covalent bonds formed? They're formed via dehydration or condensation reactions, and these result in the loss of H2O as seen here. And how are they deformed? How are they broken down? These strong bonds are broken down by taking that lost water, putting it right back into our equation, right back into our process using hydrolysis, and breaking them down into two single subunits. And let's just remember, lipids are not part of this polymer uh, situation.